Understanding OAuth from user agent flow to Pixie, proof key for code exchange, the evolution. Welcome to another video in the security series. We're diving into OAuth flows and we're moving over to OAuth flows used for mobile devices. Traditionally, we'd be using user agent flow, but it's been found to have some vulnerabilities. And so there is a new Pixie, proof key for key exchange, we're going to be diving into both flows and explaining why you need to move to the second one. Here's the swim lane diagram from a previous video for web server flow. And we, in this scenario, the browser is talking to a third party web server. The red indicates a slightly less secure, what we'll call front end channel going through the browser. And then the back end, the, the back end channel, which is the web server communicating to Salesforce's OAuth you know, authentication server is done in black. And that is where there it is the web server passes a client ID and a client secret, which are kept securely on the web server. So the key elements are that the web server can keep the client ID and client secret truly secure. That way, Salesforce can only grant access tokens to the web server. Now we're going to move over to user agent flow, which has been a traditional OAuth flow used for mobile device authentication. And in this flow, the client app on your mobile device opens an embedded browser in step 1A. And then the embedded browser in step 2A navigates to the Salesforce login screen, passing in a authentication request and the user authenticates directly to the Salesforce uh, login screen. And then the callback URL is sent back with an access token. So the access token is sent back to the browser and the client app can read the redirect URL and pull the access token. The client app can present the access token to retrieve data. And the client app now has secure data on behalf of the user. So this is user agent flow as it stands, but there are some key elements for what, why it's been deemed not secure, not fully secure. So number one, we're looking at um, the access token is being passed across the browser in the callback URL. And if that transact, if that, if that was intercepted, it should be going over HTTPS, so it should be on a secure channel. But if the mobile device had, was somehow you know broken or hacked, some potential app on the mobile device could grab the callback URL and have the access token. So that is a key element is the asset access token is vulnerable. We're also making a request and we want to know that the recipient of the access token is the same app that made the initial request. So that is the key element. The client app makes an initial request and we want to know that the that the the app that's getting the access token is the same one. And so this and because the mobile apps do not have the ability to keep the client ID secret the client secret secret because you can do a memory dump on a mobile device and or other apps can jailbreak or crack into the mobile device and read the client secret, you cannot embed a client secret on mobile apps. It won't stay secret. So a new flow has been developed to alleviate this. And what we have is web server flow with proof key for code exchange. And the key element of this flow are the following. We're gonna, the client starts with a random number. And we're gonna call that this first gold key right here. And it's the code verifier. So it's a random, never existed before, one-time use. Then the client app runs it through a grinder. Uh, the grinder is called a SHA-256 hash, which will grind it up and produce something different. Now this is a one-way grind, hashes are one way. And what that means is once you get the end result, so you're gonna get the second key, the code challenge. And there is no way to know the original code for, that came through the grinder. So, the client app will have the original code, the gold key, the SHA-256 hash algorithm, and the code challenge, which is the result of the grinder. 
Now what's going to happen is the client will follow a similar photo before, open embed a browser, trigger to redirect, but it's passing key number two, the code challenge. So the code challenge is passed to Salesforce. The user sees the login screen. The user authenticates and the browser is sent back an auth code, but Salesforce will hold on to the original, to the silver key, the code challenge. Now, the client app will read, be able to read the auth code. So this is a this is pulling from elements from the web server flow. And now on a secure channel 4A, the client app presents the auth code and it includes the silver, the gold key, the code verifier. So now Salesforce will receive the auth code, the little token I've described in previous videos. It will have the new gold key. It knows the SHA2 hash algorithm and it had the previous silver key. And what it'll do is it'll check to see if the code verifier run through the hash algorithm, if the gold key through the grinder produces the silver key. And if it does, then we now know that the client that first sent the request, the silver key, is the same client that's trying to cash in the token to get the wrist bracelet. And this cannot be spoofed because if some, on the first set of communication, we're only sending the gold key, I mean the silver key, the code challenge. And then if any were nefarious you know, uh, actor or packet sniffer or man in the middle attack were to grab the silver key, they still don't have the gold key because that's the, they can't go backwards through the SHA2 hash. So we now know that any, uh, you know, attack surface would only have the silver key. Then on 4A, we're requiring the gold key to be presented. So the gold key is presented in 4A. It's sent on a secure channel. And then Salesforce has the previous silver key that was used to request the auth code. And it has the new gold key, which should have been used to create the silver key. And it knows the SHA2 algorithm. So this works. So you have an ability where um, the client app just whips up a temporary number, hashes it, sends it across as the code challenge, follows this very similar flow to the web server flow, and then presents the um, gold key and receives the access token. This way, you can't have a deflection. Someone can't have intercepted the, the, the access token and represent it as though it were themselves. So this is the new web server flow with proof key for code exchange, which is to be used to add additional levels of uh, protection. I know it seems a little more convoluted, but what we're trying to protect is a case where mobile apps are not as secure as a web server. Web servers can be locked in server rooms and protected. Mobile apps can have other mobile apps that can reach in and grab, reach into memory spaces or intercept the, 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 the browser history on the redirects. So there are vulnerabilities on the mobile device and the web server flow doesn't fully address and close those holes. This new proof key for key code exchange allows it with the gold key, the hash, the silver key, and then sending the silver key first and the gold key at the end creates a way in which the authentication server can be sure that whoever is, whichever process is requesting the auth code at the beginning is the same one that exchanges it for an access token at the end. Not, it's not too much more code, pretty straightforward to set up, and it elevates the security to give us what we need. I hope this was helpful. So thank you for uh, locking it down with OAuth. Join us again, same bad time, same bad channel on Steve TechArk YouTube and www.stevetechark.com. Keep joining for more great Salesforce Architect Insights. Thank you very much and have a great day.